So when we think of star trails as globe evidence, we usually think of stars rotating clockwise around the south celestial pole. I mean, how many of these could there possibly be on a flat Earth? But in this video, I'm going to show that all star trails are globe evidence. Now here's a graphic I made which I have posted on Discord, and it is really self-explanatory. And of course, flat earthers typically do not respond. But I'm your Copernicus not only replied with this comment, the stars do not go below the horizon. He actually supplied a link to his video of star trails. So you have to wonder how he went out, recorded a number of star trail videos, and didn't understand that they continue on the same path below the horizon. So I made this graphic, and whenever I see Travis on Discord, I will post this for him. And surprise, surprise, he has never given an answer. Now here's the star trail time lapse that I used on my last video for Flatsoid. And I would have to assume that they must think the stars have breaks. So let's take a look at some real world examples to see why this is the truth. So in the Northern Hemisphere, we have Polaris, which is the pole star, and it is located at the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. Now the Big Dipper is an easily identified constellation, and this is one of the methods you can use to find Polaris. Cassiopeia is also another easily identified constellation because it is in the shape of a W, and it can also be used to help you find Polaris. Now this is a sky map from timeanddate.com for my hometown of Seattle, Washington. And this would be for the 11th of September at around midnight. Now since Seattle is located at 47.6 degrees north latitude, depending on your location in the area, Polaris would be about 47 degrees above the horizon. And here's the location of the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia. Now you can see that the Big Dipper is well above the horizon even though it is below Polaris. So from Seattle, if it was a clear night, I could always see the Big Dipper. It was never hidden by the horizon. But now I live in Bangkok, Thailand, which is over 2,000 miles south of Seattle, and I'm about 900 miles north of the equator. Now Bangkok is located at 13.8 degrees north latitude, so Polaris is about 14 degrees above the horizon. Now this is also for the 11th of September, the same date for Seattle, and although I could see Cassiopeia, I cannot see the Big Dipper. But during March, around midnight, the Big Dipper is easily visible above Polaris. So this is the location of the horizon from Bangkok. And I'm going to get rid of the rest of the stars so we can see what happens to the Big Dipper as it does its counterclockwise rotation around Polaris. And this would be the position of the Big Dipper right above the horizon. And it continues on that same path below the horizon. And this would be the position of the Big Dipper as it rises above the horizon. And this full rotation happens once a day. Now this is an example of southern star trails and a clockwise rotation. But it really doesn't take much to understand that those stars continue on that same path below the horizon. So again, when the Big Dipper is below Polaris, it is always visible from Seattle. But from Los Angeles, the Big Dipper would only be partially visible as it went below Polaris. Now it'd be foolish to think that the angles between Polaris and the Big Dipper would change, so of course from Mexico City, you would not see the Big Dipper below Polaris. Again, this is from my current location in Bangkok. Now Singapore is to the south of me, almost on the equator, and if you were lucky, you might be able to see Polaris just above the horizon. And of course from Darwin, which is on the northern coast of Australia, even Polaris is not visible. But you would be able to see the Big Dipper from Darwin as it passed above Polaris. 
but you would never see the Big Dipper from Sydney because even when it's above Polaris, it would still be just below the horizon. But from Sydney, you can look to the south and see both the Southern Cross and the Pointers rotate right along the horizon as they pass below the South Celestial Pole. Now this is looking to the east, and since the star trails are angling to the right, this would be from the Northern Hemisphere, but it's quite obvious that these stars are rising from below the horizon. Here are vertical star trails from Rwanda, which sits just south of the equator between latitudes 1 and 3 degrees south. Now since I live near the equator and I always see celestial bodies move across the sky like this, it's quite easy to understand why this works on a globe. So using the example from Rwanda, here I have an observer in Africa that's on the equator, and of course the horizon would be tangent to the surface of the globe. Here are some stars to the west. This is the direction of the Earth's rotation. And the fixed stars would appear to be heading vertically down towards the horizon. And of course we could also say that they are moving perpendicular to the horizon. So when you're looking west near the equator, not only do stars appear to be moving vertically down to the horizon, this also means that their apparent movement is completely around you. And when you look to the east, the stars will appear to move vertically up from the horizon due to that rotation. And again, those stars travel completely around you during a full rotation. And of course, when you try to explain this on a flat Earth, it makes absolutely no sense at all. Celestial bodies are supposed to be above the surface of the Earth, not going around it. So if you think the Earth is flat, you might just want to wake up and smell the coffee. Because again, observed evidence shows that we live on a globe.